G'day Blues fans, another episode, another season review for 2020 and today we have the Bloor Broad Player of the Year, Jacob Wiedering. Finally, finally that breakout season we've all been waiting for where Wieders has just taken that step to being what I consider an elite key defender in this competition now. Um, I think he was unlucky not to make the final All-Australian squad but making that 40-man squad's hard enough. It puts him in the top 40 players in the competition, and that says it all. It says it all about the season that he had, and it is remarkable to think that this guy is still just 22 years of age. So he's got such a long future ahead of him. He's played 93 games already as well. Just so It shows how consistent he's been across the four or five years that he's been in the competition now. Um, but to be 22 years old and, and doing the things that he was doing this year is so exciting to see as a Carlton fan because we've got this defensive stalwart at the club for the next 10 years. That's And we just you just know what you're going to get out of him. And, he, and the thing is, he hasn't even reached his peak yet, which is scary. It is genuinely scary what Wieders can do. So if we look at his season, he started like a house on fire. You've got Tom Lynch just come off winning a flag. You know, he was, he was in form for Richmond last year as there as their, you know, their, their target up forward. And he was goalless after round one. Weeders kept him goalless. Um, you go to round two, he plays on Tom McDonald, goalless. Round three, got touched up a couple of times by Tom Hawkins, but did pretty admirably on the night, I, I would have thought, considering Tom Hawkins' year. Um, and just went on with it. He took scalps like Ben King, Josh Bruce, Jeremy Cameron, goalless, 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 goalless. So... Phenomenal in terms of the defensive one-on-one -on -one work that he was doing. And you could see it. He's just... I don't know if he put on a little bit of weight in the off-season, but he looked... He looked strong. He looked big. He looked like he was... He, he, he knew and he had confidence in himself for once that he could take these defensive one-on-ones on head-on and win them. And he was. And he was winning them week after week after week after week. Didn't matter who he was playing on. It was, it was genuinely phenomenal to watch. And... Um, you know, alongside Jones as well, I, I think we've got one of the most dynamic defensive duos in the competition. They're, they're up there with Andrews and Gardner. They're up there with, you know, um, uh, Asprey and Grimes. You know, they're, they're right up there. They haven't won the games. They haven't done the things that those defensive duos have done, but it's only a matter of time. And I think 2021, you're going to see them together go to another level again. They were, they were in the first half of the season especially, and, and Wiedering in particular, he was so influential in our results and, and in stemming the flow of the opposition when they were getting on those five, six goal runs. Against Melbourne, for instance, he, he took over the game in, in that second half, in the back half. Against Sydney, which for me was his best performance of the year, he had 12 marks. And Sydney were on a roll, and this was in, this was in, in, in rain as well. It was driving rain at one point. Had 12 marks, three of them were intercepted, just came off his man, read the play, and set up. He had a couple of score launches that day, three score involvements coming out of the coming out of the back half, and, and really propelled us to that that unforgettable win that, that we're not we're, we're not going to forget anytime soon as as Carlton fans uh, this year. Matty Cottrell with the uh, the Greek freak, but Weeders just phenomenal, and it was capped off with another 22 under 22 spot uh, in, in that team, the the AFL. 22 under 22 team and and capped off by that 40 man all australian nomination i think uh, I, I don't think he could have had a better year there were times where he fell off a little bit i think max king got the better of him in the st kilda game early on and it it probably didn't do too much for our fortunes that night considering how dominant he was early but for for the majority of he didn't miss a game and for the, and for every game that he played in he was he was just super 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 consistent and and you just knew what you were gonna gonna get from Weeders. If the ball was going near Weeders at a contest, you were confident. You were confident that he was gonna take control of that contest, whether it was one on one or in a pack situation, and we were gonna come out with the ball. And he did so so many times. He he lost fifteen percent of his contested one on ones, and he was ranked elite for the amount of contested one on ones um, that he had this year. So absolutely incredible season. Nothing more to say. Um, then a big, big A plus for Wieders this season. I hope he goes on with it. I hope he does even better things next season and beyond. He signed a, a, an extension to keep him at the club till 2025, which which is amazing. 
Um, and I'm fully expecting on best and fairest night that he takes out the John Nichols medal. I think he'll be right up against it with, with Sam Walsh, but I can't go past Wiedering this year as, as our absolute best player. So let me know in the comments, guys, as usual, and um, go Blues.